What does the Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list and a Black Friday sale have in common? They're both bait and switch scams, and if you think that's a bit of a stretch, then stick around, because I'm about to blow your mind. Bait and switch scams have been around for centuries. In fact, they're one of the oldest marketing tricks in the book. Here's how it works. In a classic bait and switch scam, you're usually promised a great deal, or an amazing product, or a great price, and it seems way too good to be true. This is the bait part of it. You show up ready to snag this bargain, but when you get there, suddenly things go wrong. Instead, you're switched through a variety of techniques to buy a more expensive or even lower quality item, and often you're so caught up by the excitement that you fall for it. It's a scam that's been used by many shady salesmen, big box stores, and even well-known companies like Walmart or Apple. Black Friday is probably the most famous example of a bait and switch scam today. Retailers throw out these crazy one-time only deals that are nearly impossible to get, but once they have you in the store, they use a variety of methods to push you towards pricier alternatives, and most people go along with it because you're already in the shopping mindset. The whole idea of a bait and switch scam is getting you hooked on the idea of a deal, even if it's not the one you wanted. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell does this have to do with Yu-Gi-Oh in the ban list? Well, let's be real. Konami has mastered their own version of the bait and switch. Think about it. They release these powerful new cards that are hyped up to dominate the meta, cards that everyone scrambles to get their hands on. We're talking pre-sale hype, secondary market prices, players dumping hundreds and thousands of dollars into the latest meta-defining deck. That's the bait. You build the deck. You get your wins. You feel like a king. But a few months later, here comes the switch. The cards you just spent all that money on, yeah, they're getting banned or limited. All of a sudden, your deck is borderline unplayable. And now you're left scrambling to pick up the next best thing before it happens all over again. It's a cycle. A vicious, manipulative cycle. Konami baits you with these overpowered, must-have cards, only to switch them out when they've squeezed enough out of the player base. You think that you're buying into the next meta-defining deck, but what you're really buying into is a ticking time bomb. Now here's the thing, Konami knows exactly what they're doing. Konami isn't stupid. They print these broken cards, hype them up, watch the player base go wild for them, and then, just when you've invested way too much time and money, they pull the rug right from under you. These cards you just bought into? Unplayable. And you're left with two choices. Keep playing an inferior version of your deck, or buy into the next batch of broken cards. It's like showing you your dream car at a great price, getting you hooked on how amazing it looks, how it drives, and then telling you, oh, sorry, we're all out of that model, but here's a tricycle you can buy for the same price. Since you've already committed to the idea of getting the best deal, now you're stuck with whatever scraps the car dealer, or Konami in this case, offers you. Now this is where I have to be honest. Many Yu-Gi-Oh players have this ban list will save us mentality, but guess what? It's part of the scam. Every few months we sit around refreshing our screens, waiting for the ban list, hoping it'll fix the meta. Yugi tubers with literal connections to Konami, start posting banlist prediction videos, getting everyone more hyped. Like this banlist is gonna be the one that finally saves the meta, but it never really does. What it actually does is make us buy new cards because the decks we've been using get hammered. And Konami, they love this. They print the next set of broken cards, rinse and repeat. This cycle isn't about balancing the game, it's about keeping us on the hook, constantly spending money. I mean, sure, sometimes a banlist will temporarily knock out the best deck, but within only one or two formats, Formats, there's always another to take its place. And coincidentally, the best decks in the new format are often from the latest set Konami just dropped. Convenient. It's all on purpose. Konami isn't trying to balance anything. They're not sitting there at their meetings with shareholders thinking, how do we make the game fair for everyone? Should we ban Max C? No. All they're thinking is how do we keep people buying more cards? It's a scam, plain and simple. A bait and switch where the bait is the latest must have deck, and the switch is when they make that deck unplayable. They sell you these cards knowing full well they'll make them worthless later. And worst of all, we've been convinced that this is normal, that this is just how the game is played. We're actively cheering against ourselves for the scam to continue every time we beg for a new ban list. We don't even want the game to be fixed anymore. We just want to buy into the new next set of lies. Now if you're still not seeing the connection, think back to Black Friday for a sec. Retailers like Walmart will throw out these insane deals to get you into the store. TVs for 50% off, laptops at rock bottom prices, but once you're there, those deals are either sold out or don't even exist. This is done intentionally. Instead, what they really want to do is push you to buy something more expensive. And because you've already invested the time, energy, and excitement into getting that deal, you're more likely to settle for the pricier option. They bait and they switch. Now apply that to Yu-Gi-Oh! You see decks like Snake Eye, Tier Limits, whatever, dominating the meta, everyone's hype, the market is going nuts, and you got literal Konami-sponsored Yu-Gi-Tubers telling you, you've got a 
get on this deck before it's too late. So you spent hundreds of dollars getting the new best deck together, but then just like that Black Friday deal, you get baited. Because in a few months, the ban list drops and surprise, it's gone. Now you've got to spend even more money to keep up. And here's where the real trick comes in. Konami doesn't just bait you with powerful decks. They make you believe that banning these cards is somehow the only way to fix the meta. They spend a lot of resources convincing you that these bans are necessary to fix the game. But the reality? Banning these cards doesn't stop the cycle. It never has and never will. The only thing that actually balances the game is the constant flow of even stronger cards, aka power creep. That's the only thing that can shift the meta. The bans are just there to reset the bait and switch scam, getting you to spend more money on the next wave of overpowered decks. Do you remember Mathmex Circular? I mean, that was degenerate, right? People cheered when it got banned. Now Circular looks like a well-behaved little house pet compared to the monstrosity that is Snake Eyes or Fiendsmith. But here's the thing, banning these decks isn't going to solve anything. I mean, really think about it. Looking back at it, what difference did nerfing decks like Zodiac, Goki, or even Burning Abyss back in the day really make? If they knew they were going to release Tier Limits a few years later, and then Snake Eyes a few years after that, then did it really make a difference? They could have easily let those older decks exist while releasing the newer decks like Tier and Snake Eye. The only difference is that by banning those old decks first before releasing the new and improved product, Konami gets to maximize their sales because now you don't even have the option to continue playing older decks even semi-competitively. The truth is, it's like a Hydra. You cut off one head, Snake Eye, Fiendsmith, whatever, and two more degenerate decks grow in its place. And next year, Snake Eyes is gonna look like a little Mickey Mouse deck compared to whatever dumpster fire Konami's cooking up for 2025. It's the perfect scam. And the worst part? We fall for it every time. The cycle keeps on going because they've trained us to believe that this constant churn of ban lists is just how the game works. In reality, it's not about balance or fairness. It's about keeping us hooked, constantly spending more money. Just like the bait and switch scam, we're left holding the bag every time while Konami counts their profits. Now, before anyone starts thinking I'm out here with torches and pitchforks against one card combos or broken decks, let me clear this up. I like big powerful decks that can do crazy combos. I'm not against explosive combos, insane end boards, or even control decks that can turn one card into infinite advantage. That's honestly what makes Yu-Gi-Oh exciting. Those moments when one card pops off and you feel like a genius for pulling it off. Trust me, when my deck pulls off some wild five minute chain of combos that leaves my opponent speechless, I'm having the time of my life. I'm not sitting here saying ban all the fun. That's not the point. The point is, this constant imbalance we see in Yu-Gi-Oh isn't random. Konami deliberately drip feeds strong support to a handful of selected decks, while the rest get at best average upgrades. The result? You have one or two decks like Snake Eyes, Fiendsmith, or Tier Limits dominating the meta, while others can barely keep up. This intentional imbalance forces players to look to the ban list as the solution, hoping that by banning or limiting these dominating decks, their own undersupported decks will finally get a chance to shine. But the truth is, the ban list isn't the fix. It's just a way to keep the imbalance going, leaving most decks in the dust until the next wave of power creep comes in and making you more susceptible to falling victim to Konami's scam. Anyone still hoping for some magical good format after the next ban list? Let me break it down for you. Sure, we get these brief moments where the game feels balanced, but those are just breaks between punches. It's like Konami stops punching you in the face for a few minutes, gives you a breather, then comes back swinging like Muhammad Ali even harder with the next set of busted cards. If Konami wants to go down this road, which they clearly do, then they need to give every deck the tools to keep up. Every deck should be able to participate in this one card combo fiesta we have now. Every deck should have access to generic staples, instead of handpicking a few decks to be meta worthy, just to throw the rest of us a bone. Make all decks playable. But of course that's not gonna happen, because if everyone has a one card combo, Konami can't keep selling you the new next set of broken decks, and we can't have that now, can we? So what's the bottom line? We're stuck in this endless loop. Konami drip feeds the strongest support to a select few decks, keeps most of the game in a constant state of imbalance, and then drops a ban list like it's some sort of meta reset. It's not a reset. It's a way to keep the cycle going. Each time they ban the latest deck that's dominated the format, they're already setting up the next one. And the worst part? We fall for it every single time. And the sad truth is, this isn't gonna stop. The next wave of decks will be even stronger, and Konami will keep creating just enough imbalance to make sure people keep crying for bans. And then when the ban list drops, we'll think, this time it's different. This time the format will be fixed. But guess what? In a few months, the cycle will repeat and we'll be right back where we started. I'm not saying don't enjoy the game. Yu-Gi-Oh is fun, no question. But don't fall for the scam. Don't let Konami convince you that the ban list is the only 
only way to fix things. Don't advocate against yourselves. The real issue is this carefully controlled imbalance they've created. And until we stop letting them manipulate us into believing that the next ban list will fix everything, we're just gonna keep spending more and more trapped in their cycle. So at the end of the day, the ban list isn't a fix. It's a tool. A tool to keep us spending. So next time you find yourself getting hyped for the next ban list or chasing the next meta deck, just remember, it's not about balance, it's about business. Play smart, enjoy the game, but don't let yourself be scammed. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the ban list in the comments. Do you think it's a scam or is it really the only way to have any sort of balance? And don't forget to watch out and stay safe.